Hey guys, Anthrolog here, and now that the new Nexuses are out, I can safely say that the new Moto Wax 2015 Pure, or Style, depending on where you live, is my favorite phone of 2015. The Moto X feels great in the hand. It has the usual Motorola style slope curves on the back that makes the phone comfortable to hold. It's a 5.7 inch device, but it has a footprint of a 5.5 inch phone, so one handed use isn't hindered by the size. The back of the phone is made from a rubber material, which is pretty nice feeling. It's grippy and prevents the phone from slipping out of your hand, but it does tend to attract lots of lint and dust, and also when you drop the phone in a sandy area, this happens. Anyways, if you don't like the backing, you can either select a custom backing through Moto Maker like wood or leather, or you can slap a skin on it to give it almost the same effect, and the ones I have here are from Slick Wraps. There's a metal rim around the outside of the phone, which makes the phone feel great in the hand. It, along with the heftiness of the phone, makes the phone feel way more premium than stuff like the LG G4, which costs about $200 more than this phone, or any plastic phone for that matter. On the right side, we have our buttons, and I really like them. They're one of the most clicky and tactile, not to mention that the power button has a grippy texture so you don't press the volume button while you're trying to press the power button. Moving up, we'll find the SIM and SD card slot as well as the headphone jack. SD card slots aren't something we see in many phones nowadays, but the Moto X supports micro SD cards for expandable storage, which is a huge plus for most users. Finally, on the bottom is a micro USB port, but this one has a trick up its sleeve. It uses a special turbocharger to be able to charge super fast, and in about 15 minutes, I could charge 15% of the phone's battery. It kind of reminds me of a Geico ad. 15 minutes could charge 15% or more on the phone's battery. Anyways, it's super convenient if you just need a quick juice up in the middle of the day. But you probably won't need an extra juice up in the middle of the day because the battery life is pretty good with this phone. I was able to get through a whole day of use and it was just really, really solid battery life. The Moto X is rocking a 5.7 inch 1440p LCD display. It looks nice, colors are there, and it gets really bright and really dim. It pretty much puts that G4's display to shame. The bezels are also small on this phone, so it has the footprint of a 5.5 inch phone. I would have preferred an AMOLED screen so that not all the pixels have to light up while it's on ambient display mode, but oh well. Along with the screen are the speakers. They're really awesome. They're stereo, so both of the speakers are powered. They're front facing, sound great, and whether it's for watching YouTube videos or gaming, they'll sound amazing and you'll definitely like the experience. One thing that's really been bad with the previous Moto X's are the cameras, but I'm glad to report that the new Moto X camera is very good. It doesn't over sharpen the images, there's a decent amount of dynamic range, but the one thing I found super surprising was how accurate the colors were. In pretty much every shot, there were true to life colors, and there was no extra saturation like you can see on the G4 or the S6. But sometimes it does overexpose the images. You can see in this test shot that the Moto X is up there with a lot of the other flagships. And while it might not be as good as the high end ones, if you don't put them side by side, you probably can't tell the difference. The front facing camera is meh. There's also a front facing flash, which you should never, ever use. Anyways, as like the previous Moto X's, the X is running a near stock version of Android with a couple other Moto features attached. You can double chop to turn the flashlight on, double twist to turn the camera on, and you can set the Moto X to respond to you by voice even when the screen is off. You can also wave your hand over the screen when the screen is off to see your notifications at a glance. It's pretty neat. The best thing about the Moto X is that there's absolutely no bloatware. There are about three extra apps included with this phone, and I used all of them during my time with the phone. Other than that, everything else in the operating system is stock Android, and it runs super smoothly. It doesn't lag, or it doesn't stutter, and it's a buttery smooth experience using this phone. Gaming is also really fun, and there was just no stuttering or lag that I experienced. Multitasking is a breeze, and it's just really smooth and fast. One thing that makes the Moto X unique is Moto Maker, and you can pretty much customize every aspect of the phone. You can change the accent color, change the back color, you can change the back material, and you can even engrave the back of your phone, and that's something you won't get on any other flagship. So in conclusion, why is the Moto X the best phone of 2015 in my opinion? Well, it checks off all the boxes on my list. Good display? Check. Good speakers? Check. Great build quality? Check. Good one-handed usability, check. A pure stock Android experience, check. And really, really nice customization. 
The only thing that this Moto X does not have over any other flagship is a fingerprint sensor, and I feel that they could have included it on the dimple on the back of the phone, but other than that, if a fingerprint sensor is not crucial for you to have in a phone, I honestly think this is the best phone of 2015. Anyways guys, thanks for watching and subscribe for more tech videos like this, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.